This episode is brought to you by New Mexico and New Mexico's biggest fan. I'm Alice, and I love New Mexico. Whenever anyone at Gimlet asks for advice on where to go on a vacation, I'm always like, go to New Mexico. It is unlike any other place you will ever go. Coming up, a story from Alice's New Mexico adventures. Plan your own trip at newmexico.org. New Mexico. True. This episode is brought to you by Merrill. Whether it's finally getting to that dream project or starting a new chapter in life, Merrill gives you personalized investment advice and guidance to help turn your ambitions into action. What would you like the power to do? Learn more at Merrill.com. This is the way up. I want you to describe what we're driving through right now <laughs> okay. for somebody who can't see it. Uh, black, jagged rocks, and there's just piles and piles and piles of them extending as far as you can see. Hundreds of years ago, astronomers looked through their telescopes and saw a planet that reminded them of home. It had days that lasted about 24 hours. It had something that looked like ice caps at the poles and something that looked like clouds rolling across the sky. The planet was Mars. And ever since, humans have been trying to get there. I'm oh, sorry, we're going, transferring over to the dirt road now. In 1958, NASA was founded. Before they even had a logo, they started planning their first Mars mission. And soon enough, they dropped a tiny robot in the Martian dirt. The pictures it sent back, panoramas of cracked, jagged rocks, look almost exactly like the landscape I'm driving through right now. This is absolutely the weirdest landscape I've ever seen. <laughs> This is one of the few places on Earth that you can get pretty close to actually physically being on Mars without being on Mars. And a few years ago, NASA announced a plan to send humans to Mars. The air on Mars is poison. At night, the temperature drops to 100 degrees below zero. And when humans finally arrive on Mars, they could end up staying there for more than a year before the planets get close enough for them to come home again. So if they're going to survive that year on Mars, the crew will need a place to live. Oh, is it coming over the horizon? Yes, yes that's it. I'm standing on the side of a giant volcano in a remote part of Hawaii. It's cold. It's actually really cold. And all I can see is rock. And uh, the only thing I can see other than rock is this dome. This dome is the habitat. It's a life-sized model of the thing astronauts could live in on Mars when we finally get there. It's white, it's about the size of a two-car garage, and it is the site of a really crazy experiment. See, the first people on Mars will be further from home than any person has ever been before. They'll be on a totally desolate planet with only each other for company. And they'll be crammed together in a glorified pup tent. That mixture of isolation and confinement, of being stuck so far from Earth and so close to each other, what does that do to a person? That's what this dome and this experiment are designed to find out. The experiment is called High Seas. It stands for Hawaii Space Exploration Analog and Simulation, and it was set up to help NASA test equipment for Mars. But the equipment being tested here isn't the rockets or the spacesuits. It's not even the habitat I'm standing in front of. High Seas was designed to test a far more critical piece of equipment. Humans. The humans are a part of this whole system. Um, and uh, if, if the humans fail, the system's just as broken as if the rockets do. 
Yeah, and humans do fail a lot. Humans fail, yeah. This is Kim Binstead. She's a professor at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and she's in charge of this whole experiment. And let's not kid ourselves. If our astronauts are not functioning extremely well as individuals and extremely well as a team, that is going to put the mission at risk. So Kim and her team have chosen six volunteers, six human guinea pigs, to live in this habitat as if it's actually on Mars. And the rules are, the atmosphere outside is poison. If they step outside without a spacesuit on, they'll die. They're going to live like that in this little dome cut off from their friends and families for one whole year. It's like the premise of a space-age reality show. The true story of six strangers picked to live in a dome to find out what happens when people go to Mars. Oh my gosh, it's so warm! These are the human guinea pigs. Why was I expecting cold water? (laughs) They're doing cannonballs into the warm, salty water off the coast of Hawaii, enjoying one of their last days on Earth. It's nice. It's so warm. This is Carmel. Carmel is 26 years old, and she looks like she just stepped off a Wheaties box. Long, shiny ponytail, big smile, rosy cheeks. She's one of those people who's just good at every sport, running most of all. Running feels like... um, Like forgetting all the things that are going on in your life and just being in the moment and just existing with what you have exactly right in front of you, which is the road or the trail or, yeah. When the mission starts, Carmel will be the commander. Her crew includes Shay, a doctor. Anne Jay, an engineer. And two European scientists, Christiana from Germany and Cyprian. (laughs) He's French. Are you going? Yeah, of course. It's the last one I can jump into the water before a year. Oh, shit, backflip. And finally, there's Tristan, an architect who dreams of building things in space and who right away takes the role of crew comedian. Oh, did you hear about the skeleton that didn't go to the prom? Yeah, he had no body to go with. He's always ready with a joke. Why wouldn't the ghost go skydiving? Or two, or three. He didn't have the guts. That was a good one. (laughs) Imagine listening to jokes like that for a year. I first heard about this experiment a few weeks before it was supposed to begin, and right away I was obsessed. I called the researchers and asked for permission to meet the crew. I drained my bank account buying a ticket to Hawaii. I'm a science journalist, so this is kind of my thing, but it's more than that. The idea of signing up to spend a whole year with five strangers, day after day, hour after hour, minute after freaking minute, that's just mind-boggling to me. Like, I won't go to a party on a boat, because if it gets awkward, there's no escape route. I dated my partner for six years before I agreed to move in with him, and that's someone I love. Just the thought of doing what these six people have signed up to do makes me want to run home, curl up in a blanket, shove my nose in a book, and not talk to anyone for a week. But when I ask these guys what they'll miss, the idea of being alone in a blanket with a book doesn't really come up. I'm going to miss flying. Anjay, the engineer, loves flying these little two-seater planes. Before he came here to start the mission, one of the last things he did was fly himself to a favorite restaurant of his for a final meal. I'm going in again. Carmel, the commander, grew up in Montana, surrounded by wide-open spaces. The day she filled out her high seas application was in the middle of lambing season, when all the new lambs are born. She'd been up late delivering them, cradling their warm little sheep bodies in her arms. I'm going to miss uh, being outdoors with the like breeze blowing on your face and doing anything you can do outdoors without a spacesuit on. 
Next. I think I'm just gonna miss chaos. And here's Shay, the crew doctor. The chaos of unexpected weather, of meeting new and random people, of getting lost. Um, you know, real true chaos of, of what happens when you have billions of people running around you. The unexpectedness. I'm gonna miss surprises, I think, more than anything else. Chaos, unexpectedness, flying tiny little planes, feeling the wind in your hair. It's not a huge surprise that this crew gives those answers. These guys were selected to be as much like real NASA astronauts as possible. And historically, NASA astronauts have been these athletic, adventurous people. Of course, the question is, are athletic, adventurous people the right people to shut in a tiny little dome for a year? What will they do with all that athletic, adventurous energy? Will they turn on each other, like Lord of the Flies style? But when I mention that concern to the crew, they wave it off with the kind of can-do confidence you'd expect from a typical NASA recruit. You guys all seem totally confident that, like, you'll get along and everything will be chill. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any problems with anybody, and I'm sure that, you know, rough moments aside, we'll all get along fantastically. That's Tristan. I'm sure I'll have, like, five best buds for life by the time we're out of here. But before they can even get in there, things start to go wrong. That's after the break. Wait, sorry, I'm gonna jump in again. It's, it's really nice. There's this... Yeah, Lynn, are you gonna jump in? I'm Lynn, by the way. You're listening to The Habitat from Gimlet Media. <laughs> All right, I'll jump in. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by New Mexico. I'm Alice, and I love New Mexico. Gimlet's community coordinator, Alice, might just be New Mexico's biggest fan. She's got a lot of places she loves in the land of enchantment. One of her faves? There's this place called the Blue Hole of Santa Rosa. And it is a naturally occurring, basically just like a big well of water. And it goes so deep that people can actually scuba dive in it. And it just, there's all these like people just sitting around enjoying the sun and like kind of treating it like the community pool. But then you would just see these people in like full scuba gear dive on in. I've never seen anything like it. Whether you're looking for the blue hole or a fuchsia sunset, you can find it in New Mexico. Plan your trip at newmexico.org. New Mexico, true. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. Hiring isn't as simple as putting an ad in the paper or posting to a job board. When you're juggling hiring with everything else it takes to grow your business, it's important to reach the right candidates at the right time. That's where LinkedIn comes in. More than 650 million members visit LinkedIn every day to make connections, grow as professionals, and discover new job opportunities. LinkedIn says its members apply to 35 job posts every two seconds. But hiring isn't just a numbers game. LinkedIn makes sure your job post gets in front of people who not only have the right hard skills for your role, but also the right soft skills, the intangibles, like collaboration, work ethic, and adaptability that differentiate qualified candidates from superstars. LinkedIn does the legwork to match you to the most qualified candidates, so you can hire the person who can transform your business. To get $50 off your first job post, go to linkedin.com slash Gimlet. Again, that's linkedin.com slash Gimlet to get $50 off your first job post. Terms and conditions apply. This episode is brought to you by Merrill. Whether your life goals include finally getting to that dream project or starting a whole new chapter, Merrill can help put your plans into action. With personalized advice and guidance, The advisors at Merrill can work with you to develop an investment strategy based on your goals. What would you like the power to do? Learn more at Merrill.com. Investing in securities involves risks, and there is always the potential of losing money. Merrill makes available products and services offered by Merrill, Lynch, Pierce, Fenner, and Smith Incorporated, a registered broker-dealer, member SIPC. SIPC. 